What's up guys, Quezzy here, bringing you guys another tutorial. This time I'm going to be showing you how to do this sweet uh, Cinema 4D effect, uh, this text effect for banner, social media, stuff, whatever you want to do. Um, it's going to be a still image, no uh, motion stuff, but yeah, let's get right into this. So there's no plugins you need, nothing like you need to download, uh, although the materials I'll be using are my own materials in my store uh, my from my V4 pack so if you guys want you can go to the description and buy them if you want to use them if not you can use other um, materials you created or you have from some other source so I'm just gonna go ahead and put all this in a group for now and let's get started so we're gonna first make some text and I'm just gonna go ahead and put Quezzy here and I'm gonna center this text. I'm gonna put, set the depth to a little over 100, maybe 120. I'm gonna go to caps, I'm gonna go to fillet cap, fillet cap, one centimeter, one centimeter. And let's pick a font. Um, so you can use any font you want. I'll be showing you the font I'm going to use. Oh my gosh, I like swallowed some phlegm or something. Um, but I'll show you the font I'll use if you guys want to use it as well. Uh, where is it? Okay. I don't know which one exactly it is, but it's called uh, Amaze Doom Left. Um, so if you guys want to go ahead and download that or use it if you already have it, um, I'm just going to go ahead and make this a little bigger so it fits so the height's 200 depth 120 <clears throat> actually I don't know if that changed when I expanded it but whatever um, the texture I'm going to use on the text is this texture called one which is in the grud grunge section of my material pack so I don't know if it's here yeah here it is um, so it's this material right there and one thing you can do is if you go into it, you can increase the brightness and decrease the mix strength. Just depends on your uh, Lightroom. Um, but I did increase the lightness and decrease the mix strength of the texture. Just because my Lightroom, um, I modified it slightly so it is slightly different. Um, so I need to make some modifications. Uh, okay, first thing we're going to do is go to this view button and click that so we have these four views. Um, we're going to go up here, and I'm in the new uh, Cinema 4D R17, so some of these settings might be different, but I'm going to go here to Sketch, which is basically like the free draw spline. And I'm going to go to this top right view and just make something like this, a shape like that. I'm going to click off. I'm going to go to this left view, do a similar thing, click off, and I'm going to go behind and do a again a similar thing then I'm going to select all three of these and I'm going to check close spline I'm going to go back to my main view and <clears throat> I'm going to go away from my camera so I can move around and I'm going to go to the first spline and find it as you can see it's really low for some reason let's move it up and if, I, if you go over here, I don't know, it's the enable axis, if you click that and we go up here and we change where our arrows are, it won't move our object, but it'll just make our arrows in a more convenient place and then we just uncheck that. And we can do that with the same thing. We want to move everything close to the text like so and move all the arrows close by so we can have an easier time to move them and stuff. And this one we can just bring a little closer. All right, so everything's pretty close. Let's go back to our camera view, and let's go over here to the uh, subdiv subdivision surface category, and we want to do loft, and we want to do, uh, I think, actually, yeah, the subdivision surface. Um, and we want to put all these splines in a loft, and then the loft in the subdivision surface. And you can see we get this just weird abstract looking shape, and what we can do is move that around, and you can play with the splines to get different shapes and stuff like that. 
Um, so I'm going to say that's good, and I'm going to go ahead and add this crystal material I have, which is in the glowing section of my materials. And what I'm going to do is click on the material, go down to projection, go to cubic, and check seamless. So that is the first step in this tutorial. Uh, we're going to minimize that folder, the subdivision surface. And we're going to go ahead to our objects and get a platonic. Uh, we're going to increase the size a tad bit. Uh, let's get out of the camera view. Let's go ahead and move this back behind our text. Uh, let's go back to the camera view and let's go to our effectors and let's go to displacer and drag the displacer on the platonic. Click on the displacer and go to shading. Click this arrow and we're going to go to noise. Then we're going to go to object and we're just going to increase the height so we get a shape like that. Then we can click on the platonic and maybe decrease the size Oop. and decrease the size of this. Just get a different shape maybe. Um, so maybe like that. And I'm going to go ahead and add this material called blue also in the glowing section of my materials. And we're going to put this like in the bottom left and I'm going to move it back a little bit like that. And we're going to control C, control V that layer, bring it over. And we're just going to rotate. Let's see if it'll let me, yeah, there we go. We're just going to rotate it and try to get some new look to it. So something like that. And now let's move it up and over. Boom. All right. Pretty simple. Now we got some nice backing here. And what we're going to do now is let's minimize this. Let's go back to these viewers and let's go to this bottom right one so we can see our text head on. And we're going to go back to where we can create splines, but this time we want to go to the pen tool. And what we're going to do is go to this top right corner. We're going to click somewhere close to the middle, not quite the middle. And we're going to click, we're going to go out, we're going to make a curve, and then we're going to make another curve outside. So something along those lines. And let's go back to our standard view here. And you can vary those lines however you want. Um, you can make four of them or four different ones in each corner. But what I'm going to do is just control C, control V that one and flip it 180 degrees. Select both of those, control C, control V, flip them 180 degrees the other way. And there we go. Now these don't have much of a curve. They should be a little S-like. These are more C-like, uh, which is not good. They're like really archy, um, but you guys can go ahead and play with that. Um, what we're gonna go, what we're gonna do now is go here to where we were using the pen tool and like the splines, and we want to get a circle. And let's go back to our subdivisions and get an extrude. And we're gonna put the circle in the extrude. And <clears throat> oh, excuse me, we don't want an extrude delete that we want a sweep let's put the circle in the sweep control C control V three times for each of our splines and we want to add a spline to each one of these you'll notice they'll be huge but what we're gonna do is select the circles so hold command and select each one of these and go ahead and decrease the size so about six works and we're going to go ahead and drag the crystal material on there, minimize that all, and then let's set that again to cubic seamless. If you hold command and click this material, you can drag it onto all these layers. Um, and let's select all these sweeps. Let's get out of the camera. Let's go back to the move tool and just move them back like so. There we go. And if we control C, control V, all of these, and we go to our blue material, command, drag it on all of these, delete our crystal material, and we can rotate some of these like this. So we get two strands in each corner that are different colors and um, go at like different angles and stuff. So maybe I'll go something like that. Yeah, that's pretty cool. And let's do the same thing back here. All right. And one more. There we go. So something like that. So we have these cords kind of connecting everything, which looks pretty cool. Uh, now what we're going to do is go to the text 
and we're just gonna control C control V to copy that and we're gonna go ahead and add a crystal material and let's go to our deformers and add an explosion just the normal explosion not the explosion FX and let's drag it onto the text and increase the strength so if you increase it quite a bit you can get particles like this and depending on um, like how you, like last time I did this I didn't have so many big ones I had more small ones but if you just increase the strength you should get more small ones and they should expand so somewhere around 80 seems to be working for me uh, you just get a bunch of the different particles which looks good and I'm just gonna keep it like that um, now what we're gonna do is add some like cool sphere balls going around here so if you go to your objects and you go to landscape if you go to, if you have the object tab selected, go to the bottom, click spherical, check spherical, and go ahead and we're going to go to scale and scale is down. Come on. Keep scaling it. There we go. Something like that. And you can add either the blue material or crystal material. I'm going to go ahead and keep the crystal material because I like it better. And we're going to go ahead to the array. Add an array, put the landscape in the array, and let's select the array. Let's increase the radius a little bit. And you know what? We're gonna rotate it down 90 degrees. I'm not sure why it's all ovular. Must have messed up on the landscape part somewhere. Yeah, there we go. So make sure you keep them in spheres. Um, let's go back to the array. And let's change the array frequency. Actually, that's not going to do anything. Um, uh, let's change the ampl uh, amplitude. So now we get like different angles everything comes at. So you can just play with this. And you get different depths for these uh, sphere looking things. And I'm actually going to decrease our size a little bit more. Something like that. Um, I keep this really simple. I don't really play with this too, too much. I kind of leave it. Uh, something like this. So it's still sort of in a circle, but not really, but it's close enough that it's not too hectic. All right. Um, one of the last things to do uh, before we play with more with the actual text itself, um, we're going to go back to this bottom right view, this like face on view, and we're going to get the pen tool again. And we're just going to go around like so, kind of creating a weird blobish shape. And I hate the pen tool when it does this crap. Alright, something like that. Let's select that and close spline. And what we're going to do is go back to the main view. And you can just duplicate one of these sweep nerves we had from earlier. Um, so I'm going to do, yeah, I guess it doesn't really matter. I'm going to do this one. And I'm going to go ahead and delete the spline that's already in there and add this spline. So now we get something like this and I'm just going to move this over and if you want you can rotate it and it's rotating at an odd angle and actually probably to make this easier if you just select the spline you can just rotate that itself and just play around with it really um, maybe something like that let me move it down to there we go and let's go ahead and duplicate that and this time add the crystal material. So command, drag that, delete the blue one, and let's rotate it again. Oops, just like just the spline. Come on. I don't know why it's being so stupid. There we go. Eh. I'm not trying to do anything too crazy. I'll just keep it like that, keep it simple. There you go, nice little, uh, I don't know what to call them, but it's a nice effect going around. The text looks nice. Um, finally, we're going to go to our main text. I'm going to go ahead and just drag it to the top of everything. Just keep it simple. There we go. And I'm going to go to MoGraph Effector Random. And now you can see it kind of messes everything up. Uh, you just want to go and uncheck position and check rotation. And we're just going to kind of mess with the rotation. So. Uh, I'm not going to go like 14 on the first one, 
Let's see, not not too much on the second one either. Probably at eight. Um, so the first two you don't want to do too much because it will kind of rotate and look stupid. The last one you may be able to do a little more. Uh, actually, probably not. I'm gonna have to keep all these numbers relatively low. So I have 14, 8, and 6. And then if you want, you can check position and just decrease everything pretty substantially. Something like that. All right, and then if you want, this is an optional step, you can duplicate that text, uh, go to the array, get an atom array, add the text to an atom array, make the sphere radius one, and it should make the cylinder radius one as well. Um, add one of the materials, and again, set it to cubic, seamless, or you can just command drag it. And I'm gonna go ahead and just rotate it it wants to work. There we go. I'm going to rotate it slightly to the right. And I'm going to get out of my camera and move it back a, just a bit. And I'm going to duplicate that. Duplicate that atom array. Rotate it the other way and bring it over. So if we look at this, we get something like that. And if I render this out real quick, all right. So this is sort of the effect you get. Um, you might uh, you might want to move the atom array a little further back, unlike what I did. Um, but then when you play with this in Photoshop and add some blurs and kind of if you add like the distort wave effect, you can get some pretty cool looks uh, with this. But thank you guys for watching. If you enjoyed, please leave a like, subscribe for more content, follow me on Twitter at Quezzy. Be sure to check out my website for all the goods. Check out my store if you want to buy any of the stuff I use. And I'll see you guys next time. Peace.